Uh, what's up, people? I'm back with another video this week. Uh, I know it's in the middle of the week now. Um, now I'm currently been fur. I have currently been furloughed from work uh, for the summer, so this is starting my summer vacation now. Uh, but that could change at any time because there's a lot of crap going on at work, and I could get called back pretty much at any time. But for now. For the next few days, I'm just going to enjoy my time off and uh, get ready for the big move in a couple of months. And here we have, uh, I found a, uh, another one of these uh, cartoon cups. And this one's Droopy Dog from the, the Pepsi Collector Series from 1975. This one is. Here we have old Droopy Dog right there. And I, when, when I, uh, people used to make fun of me a lot over the years for sounding like Droopy Dog, I guess. I don't know, and I laugh. Or To me, I sound more like Scooby-Doo, but for some reason, a lot of people think I sound like Droopy Dog maybe in my earlier years before I got my old man voice or something. I don't know. But cheers to you all out there and YouTube land and how, whatever home you're watching this from uh cheers to you and first of all i got some records to show again just a few um i have a couple of country records here and one of them is john anderson wild and blue i found this for what three bucks or something um i'm not a huge john anderson fan but I like a couple of his songs, and this one has uh, Swinging on it. I remember when I was a kid, I liked this song. Uh, and I have the, I have this on a 45 in my collection. Um, but this has swing, uh, Swinging is the one I remember. Um, uh, I think that's the, really the only one I remember off of this. I'll have to listen to the whole thing to see if I like the rest. I don't know if you guys remember that song swinging. He's like sitting on a porch just a swinging. That sort of stuff. Country music right there, y'all. Um, John Anderson. Uh, next we have some more country, but this is old country. And this is George Jones, The Race Is On. I'm sure I've probably heard this song before, but I haven't heard a lot of the really old George Jones when he had this little crew cut uh, marine type haircut going on here the flat top is that what they called that back then um, now this is a really old country when they were into the uh, nudie suits and that type of thing uh, which is probably I, I really enjoy the old country uh, more than I do this new stuff that is nowadays uh, I consider it like pop country where they're more concerned about how many millions of dollars they can make or billions off of teenagers these days just like those shows you watch on tv like american idol had a couple of country singers on there that were pretty good um but the actual people who should have won the show didn't win because they were looking at somebody who could probably cross over from the pop scene to the country or you know opposite the country scene to the pop scene and I, I've lost a lot of faith in a lot of those shows that um, are they're just trying to get your views pretty much like here on YouTube or Facebook you know um, what they're doing is trying to sell music to make money just like they have been over all the all these years and now the country music scene, I guess you'd call it, has sort of switched to this poppy, uh, there's got to be a good looking gal or guy who looks to be half, um, I don't know what you would call it, half uh, hipster, a hipster country singer. That's what they're, that's a, I guess that's what we'll call it. They're a hipster country singer now. Um, it's like the Bay City Rollers singing 
George Jones now these days. <laughs> kind of a mixture between the two. I don't know if you understand that analogy, but that's the way that goes. Now, I don't listen to much uh, rap music, and I haven't over the years. But I did have this cassette once upon a time, uh, Tone Loke. And I used to play it in my uh, little, uh, I don't remember what it was, probably a, uh, a Vega, a 70-something Chevy Vega. And I had my cheap um, Kmart cassette player in there and my little cheap Kmart speakers. And I would play Tone Loke as loud as I could and then the, the little speakers couldn't handle it. So they were like, zzz, 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 <laughs> trying to play Tone Loke on there. Um, but this has Wild Thing and Funky Cold Medina, and that's why I picked this up, um, uh, because, uh, I just haven't seen this record anywhere until now. Over all these years, I think this came out, when did this come out? Like, uh, 80s, uh, sometime late 80s, I can't remember. But it's Tone Loke, Funky Cold Medina, blasting it through my little Kmart speakers. Um... And that's all the records. Now we have some comic books. You all know I'm into old comic books. And here we have um, a, uh, a, a uh, have you heard the, have, have you the nerve to face the unexpected? And there's an old, it's like a horror comic from back in the day. Uh, a mixture of the House of Secrets and the Doorway to Nightmare, which I have, I don't think I've seen that one yet. Uh, the comic. And this says, fear not, Rajah, you are too so so well protected that no one can harm you. And there's a big, like, snake-type character trying to attack the Rajah, I imagine. Um, but these are always fun. And this was a dollar comic back then, which um, during that economy was probably still expensive. But now, if you... If, you think about it, if they still sold this for a dollar now, that would be really cheap. But it's not a dollar anymore. I think this was three bucks, so it went up a little since uh, the 1970s. Uh, 1979 is when this came out. And I'm a big horror comic fan of movies. Uh, I also have a poster collection, which you've probably seen in previous videos. Now next we have a series of comics that are in no uh, certain order. Uh, they're just different years of Doctor Strange here from Marvel. Now out of all, you know you've seen the movies and the comics. Out of all the Marvel characters that are around, I think my favorite is probably Doctor Strange. Because he's the master of mystic arts. Uh, it's, you know, he's a, he's a mixture of uh, magic and uh, uh, the uh, the unexplained, I don't know what you call it, the magic and uh, that type of stuff. And he's one of the Marvel uh, type superheroes. And by far, he's probably my favorite because we were all into magic as kids. Because, you know, I used to go to the, the shop. This would be in the 1970s. And there used to be a magic store downtown. And I would go down there. And there was this bald guy. Kind of greasy looking. With the black uh, rimmed glasses. Plastic rimmed. Really thick lenses. Kind of like mine are now. But <laughs> anyway. He, he would show, demonstrate to me the old uh, hide the ball under the cups trick. And whoopee cushions. And... Different kinds of uh, tricks with cards and things that go down there. The guy's just trying to sell the uh, magic tricks. And there's you just don't find that anymore these days. And Doctor Strange kind of appeals to me because I was a big fan of magic back in the day. Um, Doctor Strange, Master of the Mystic Arts, Panic in the Park. Um, Doctor Strange, A Midsummer's Nightmare. These are all different years, and they're not, uh, they're just mixed up. And you can still find these pretty cheap between a dollar and like three dollars nowadays. Um, 
and I have several here. There's another um, just showing you the cover art and things like that. Um, now slays the in-betweener. At last, the mind-boggling conclusion of the Creator's Chronicles. Dang it! I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna see the end of the show before I even see the beginning. Don't, don't you hate it when that happens? And sometimes people like that. Uh, Morty, uh, as Doctor Morty Strange. Um, there is another one. The dream is no more. He looks like he's fighting a uh, some type of a dragon or something there. Um, and here we have Doctor Strange. Doc gets a new cloak. And this is 75 cents, so obviously this is a later year. It says right there, 1986. But um, those are just some of the comics I picked up, as well as the records. And lastly, uh, you know, you all know, oh, you all know I'm into typewriters. And I'm, I was at the antique mall just looking around. Um, upstairs, I think. No. Yeah, it was upstairs on their second floor. It used to be an old J.C. Penny a long time ago downtown here when I was a kid in the 70s. But now it's a uh, antique mall type flea market place. Uh, and, I, and, and I asked the owner, I said, do you remember when this was a... I think it was a J.C. Penny, and he said, "Yeah, I remember that." He's a, a Lawrence resident, been here for years. Um, but anyway, I was upstairs, and I'm telling my, you know, I'm kind of walking around the mall. In the back of my mind, I'm telling myself, "I'm not looking for typewriters. Don't if you see a typewriter, I'm not looking at it because I have a whole bunch of them already." Um, but then I look across the way, and there's these two. Uh, college students a guy and a girl and they're looking at this typewriter and they're tapping away on it and they're both looking at each other you know having a good time kind of laughing saying I don't know what they're saying something maybe their dad would like it or something and I'm kind of hiding behind a uh, a booth looking over there <laughs> I'm like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde I'm not going to buy a typewriter but at the same time, I wish these dirty bastards would leave so I can go look at it. Please don't take it. <laughs> that, that sort of thing. The Mr. Hyde me comes out in my mind. Um, <laughs> and and uh, <laughs> uh, they, they turn and walk away. They turn and walk away. And I, I was glad. I went and looked at it. Um, I'm thinking to myself, I shouldn't buy this. And I bought it. <laughs> I bought it. This is a 1940s Smith Corona Standard. I kind of cleaned it up here a little bit. I'm not done cleaning it. Uh, everything works on it. I'm glad of that. Even the rubber is still soft because sometimes the, the rubber on these tend to disintegrate and get hard over the years. I might have mentioned that before. The inner mechanics in there. The bell works. Everything. But the reason uh, I'm, I'm kind of talking about this again is that um, the prices on these have really skyrocketed the last couple of years over all the uh, selling sites like eBay, Etsy, uh, Facebook, Marketplace. Um, just like records did uh, now because back in the day you could buy a record for a dollar or two, fifty cents even. Um, but now the records are like way up here somewhere selling in the 20, 30, 40, 50 bucks. And the same thing happened with those typewriters now. Um, you could get one for 20 bucks at uh, Goodwill or Salvation Army. Now you go on um, any of those selling sites and they're between two and four hundred dollars depending on what typewriter it is uh, especially if it's the most expensive one i've seen is a hermes 3000 which is a swiss made typewriter it's probably one of the best typewriters ever made you could get it for like 25 bucks and now it's between 500 on up to the upper echelons of your imagination 
somewhere on the moon. <laughs> but um, uh, that's why I got that. I got it pretty cheap. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with them all eventually. Uh, I, I think my biggest dream someday would be to have my own shop where I sold and repaired typewriters or just um, sold antiques. And that, then, then I could sell everything for a thousand dollars. <laughs> Even if it was working, oh, 500 not working, 1,000 in great working shape. And that's my sort of ranting video for this week. Uh, Colin, over and out, and weirdos, unite.